Hi everyone and welcome back. So in this video we are going to build uh, another service and what this service is about this service is about all well, about how we are going to manage the files uh, for our platform. So let's say we are building a restaurant service inside a restaurant a dashboard we are uploading lots of files from the front end. So we need some service which can handle our files right. So we already have upload mechanism we just need to send these files to the APIs. So here we are going to access the maybe the next JS APIs, next JS API routes, and that next JS API routes will forward your request to the uh, the next JS APIs, external APIs. Okay. So this uh, which I was talking the initially the architecture from the next JS uh, client side, you are going to hit the next JS APIs, and that is going to hit external proxy that will call the file service. So here uh, we are doing all about uh, file service. So it's like a new service with a barebone uh, folder structure and all. And as we have written lots of services throughout this journey, I'm not going to explain you the basic things. Okay, okay, this is the controller service. And these are the component, these are the libraries. And I'm going to use some packages. So we already have a database package, a config package, a logger package. So I'm uh, planning to build another package which is AWS S3 package okay so uh, I just uh, bootstrap this service through the nest only and then uh, this is what we are thinking to do okay so this is a nest.js nest.js API route so there are two different ways actually to upload a file to the S3 and we will talk about that so there are two different ways are uh, like okay you create a simple upload API that will take a file object and you just upload it to S3. Okay. That depends if your uh, bucket is public, then that URL which you are returning is enough for the front end to access the file because that bucket is publicly accessible. I can read the data. You just need to add a policy to the S3 bucket. Okay. Public read is allowed. Otherwise, let's say your bucket is private. Then nobody, if even if you are uploading that URL, whatever the URL you are getting that is not accessible because that is not a public bucket. So you need to generate a signed URL. So there are two different ways to upload a file to the private bucket. What you can do is in the file manager service, we will write an API, which is just uh, give you the signed URL. Signed URL is just a bucket URL. You will just pass. Okay. This is my file name, which I'm going to upload and give me the signed URL. You can use that signed URL to upload uh, the data from the front end. So you can just do a put API, put call exos put from the front end react code to that signed URL. That is just another way. Okay, when your content is more private and uh, that signed URL is actually temporary. So this is how you can do here in the cases, we are using everything public. So here, if you see the architecture, we have a next JS. Uh, which is a client side component that's going to upload a file that will go to the next JS uh, server side APIs and that API will hit the proxy to upload the file because here the communication channel is long. What I'm saying is from the next JS, we will just say tell uh, the next JS APIs. Okay, this is my simple payload. I'm not sending the file. Okay, give me the signed URL for this file. I got the signed URL on my uh, next JS client side component. And then that signed URL we can do use just a put call to upload the file to S3. So that is just another way of uh, doing it. So for that, let's prepare our setup. What we are going to do is uh, in our config service. Now we are going to use AWS because uh, uh, to access the S3 bucket, we need uh, access key ID and secret uh, key or the bucket name and the reason. These are some of the AWS configurations we need. So we are going to update our config module to populate these configurations for us. So here we can just do an interface. That interface will give us all these key parameters. Access key ID, uh, which is of type string. I mean, currently we are not deploying this uh, service as a Lambda. It's still I'm going to show you the demo from my local. So I will I need to set up all these things so that the S3 client AWS S3 clients can talk to my S3 bucket, which is on my AWS account. 
and if uh, public bucket and there it can do the put item call and save the uploaded file to the AWS okay so uh, this is simple AWS setup we are doing we are just updating our uh, config module config module should be able to provide me AWS configurations whenever I'm trying to access it okay so we'll just change the method names and same as uh, other methods, we will just get the environment values for the AWS. So we need to put the dive into the ENV, the access key ID, secret key, AWS, uh, so the region and the bucket name. Currently, we are just only targeting the public bucket because our use case is to access the public buckets. Here you can see access key ID, access AWS secret access key, AWS region, S3 bucket. These are the environment variables which I'm expecting in my .env file so that I can access these values. Okay, now the next thing is uh, we will just set up all these things. So we already have the packages. I'm trying to create AWS S3 package. So first I am trying without using dynamic modules. So let's see if it works or not because we have config module config module i'm adding to the aws s3 module aws s3 module finally will be consumed by the file service and i know there will be a challenge in accessing the config service and then we have to just revamp this whole aws s3 module as a dynamic module so dynamic modules i already discussed in my nest js advanced course how you can create a dynamic nest.js modules and what is the need of it so dynamic module are some particular module where you can inject the configurations at dynamically at the runtime so it is actually decoupling the modules and you can initialize the modules uh, in whatever way you want you might have seen type rm module dot four root four root async we already have a dynamic module here db module dot four root so we are passing the configurations from the uh, like restaurant service user service to the database okay currently we are just creating a aws s3 service aws s3 module because this is aws s3 package so here we are going to inject the config service private read only config service so how to add the config service first of all we already know we need to add the dependency of config service in AWS S3 package. So package JSON should already have that definition. So that when you do the PNPM install this AWS, con uh, sorry, this config service also gets added to the package because these internal packages can also be dependent on each other, right? Here you can see its config, its logger because this is a PNPM workspace and uh, we can add the dependencies with one another and I just will move to the packages or you can just use an X console okay it's not showing so what happens is when you create a new package or new service it doesn't appear directly you need to close the terminal close the VS code and open that so that it can refresh all the packages you have and here inside the packages I have AWS S3 and PNPM install so it will install the config and logger Either you define the versions 1.0.3 or you can put a star so it will take the latest build output as a package. I mean, versioning is good. We are doing a local development so we can stick to uh, one latest version, whatever is there. So here we have the packages. Okay, it's coming from the build. I will just try to import it because we have to import it from the eats config, not from the build. So here, this is a config service. Okay, soon it will appear. And here in the constructor, this is AWS service. So we need to initialize the S3 client so we can have a S3 client. So we are using AWS SDK. That's a NPM module we need to have as a dependent as a dev dependency here and as a de de dependency in the file service so we are just using s3 and config so with that help of that we can just add a pnpm add minus d as a dev dependency aws sdk okay uh, there is a typo
so here uh, what we are doing is we are just initializing the AWS S3 client equal to S3 and here we are passing in the credential access key ID and the secret key and the reason I mean reason is US East 1 or EU Central 1 all these different reasons are available so we are just initializing this constructor this dot client and then this dot client we are going to use in all the other methods like upload download uh, get signed URL or fetch signed URL or fetch files or get signed URL for a file all these methods because this is a public bucket I will mostly will be doing upload but for upload we need to have params params contains the bucket name the key name and the body is the file and then you can just do as await s3 client dot uh, put item or something like that client dot upload and just pass the params so mostly uh, AWS clients use the same thing the client object dot upload dot put item and then you can just convert this into promise and uh, <coughs> this is optional we don't need to create a signed url if you are uploading to the public bucket because signed url is basically for, for the private bucket when you want to return or uh, accessible url for the front end then you can just generate a signed url and then return that url We may not need uh, generating a signed URL, so here we are doing the params. Params requires the key is not matching, so this is the bucket is required. Okay, key, I think key should be in uppercase, key is missing in the type. Oh, the TypeScript warning is tells you everything clearly, what is missing, so key is key. Okay, now it is fine, key. Get signed URL, that's another method which we can define in the same file get signed url is a just a method which is going what it is going to do is it will take a bucket name and get signed url promise it will try to get the object and it will give you the url okay so we just update these uh, bucket names so here there are different methods we have get signed url so it is taking the key and the original file name and for that it is generating a signed url which signed you are that signed url you can consume on the front end and here we are just configuring the final uh, s3 module because this s3 module we are going to use in the file service so how we do it we just uh, import the logger module config module uh, these are the two external modules on which we are dependent on and then just write your own module aws s3 module and export it from here so that we can use it and inside a package aws s3 index.d.ts everything looks good we can build this and we can add the dependency of aws s3 module in the file service so that when you do pnpm install we should be able to get the dependency added in the files module in the file service because file service will be doing the file upload so they will be using it so here we already have authentications role guard and already available here this is the auth module so let's go to file service so we will add uh, same i mean um, we are not going to do too much so many things here we have a simple controller we have a service we have a dao service and here we also have a prisma configuration Prisma configurations because when you are uploading a file uh, at least we should have a record okay what uh, was the file name what was the the reference id and how uh, the file was uploaded if the upload was successful or not so we can maintain uh, some kind of a dictionary that everything is uploaded correctly and here we are just uh, doing this upload and get signed url so get signed url is taking just a uh, file names a uh, multiple file names and it is giving you the signed url that signed URL you can use on the front end to upload the files using Exios put. Okay, so if you look into this service, it's like plain one in one plain simple service. We have a service, we have a controller, we have a DAO service. DAO service will use uh, Prisma client. So let me see, have we set up the Prisma here? So each config is there so we need to have a each uh, aws s3 each logger and we can specify this generic package so we can get the latest versions we can just put a asterisk and we can just do simple build when you do the build 
it will try to first build all these three dependent packages and then it will install all the dependencies inside a node modules for file service. So this is how it works. We can use an X console. It's not showing. So sometimes we need to actually terminate the VS code so that it can get a refresh results. So here we can do npm run build, but I think it is using some package from the root. So we won't be able to build it. So it's better that uh, I reopen the VS code. So meanwhile, I will just fix these typings and all. Query parameter, I think we don't need a query parameter. This is our simple Prisma setup, Prisma schema. Prisma schema, if you see the Prisma schema, what do we have? We just have a file table, which is ID, name, MIME type, storage, unique name, size, URL, state, created at and updated at. So when you do the Prisma sync and all, we have a database URL. We already have a container running. So we need to install the Prisma and the Prisma client. Prisma as a dev dependency and Prisma client as a dependency because Prisma client is something we are accessing through our code. Prisma client is giving us these Prisma models and there, there we are able to do the operations, create, update, delete, insert, all these things. So we are installing the Prisma client and then we can just use npx Prisma generate, npx Prisma migrate dev. So if your database is up and running, it will should be able to populate this table in the database. So we can just uh, run some play with some Prisma commands. NPX Prisma generate what I'm doing. PX NPX Prisma generate. So that will just create a client by looking into your Prisma schema file, which should be in the root folder, first of all. And what it is doing is it is just checking and it is creating the Prisma client. So inside a node modules, you will have a Prisma client. And now we can access. So this is just a simple service. This service, this controller is going to call a simple service. And here we are going to inject the the file service so this so this is all basic nest js stuff we are doing so we are uploading the files if you just see the code how we are doing the upload so uh, this is all about get pre-signed url so we got the files as an array and for each and every file we are running a loop and then calling get file signed url create a pre-signed url or whatever the method defined inside a file service so this is file service which has this method get signed url and for each and every file we will just return this error as a response and if uh, something goes wrong we are just throwing that error and this is a file dao service which is having all these methods create signed url get file signed urls and this dao service is using your aws s3 service to upload get signed url uh, create pre-signed urls all those things sometimes you also need to get pre-signed url if you have the file name otherwise if you are uploading it for the first time then you will always do a create pre-signed url and you will pass the file name okay so we have a file service file dao service and here we will define the dependency of aws s3 module and aws config service config module file service and file dao service we can import okay so this is just like a basic structuring of uh, things this is our simple prisma generate command you can do on the files and then because now the files files is actually a model right sometimes it doesn't refresh you have to restart the vs code once you update the prisma model name and when you do the generate because node modules I have been updated but the TypeScript doesn't uh, this VS code doesn't detect that and doesn't expose the types so that is the thing we will do and here we are also adding some class validator class transformer and uh, some modules related to uh, 
uh, swagger and all because we have lots of things going on here this is the post signed url sending the upload get signed url this is calling the service and this service is calling the DAO service to generate a signed url for the array of the files and once signed url is generated return the array as a response okay so we got the file name original file name and that's generating the signed url and here we are doing file DAO service dot create so unique storage unique name uh, here we can define this method so this is where we are going to access the prisma client this dot uh, prisma client so we need to import inject that prisma client here in the DAO service which we are not doing right now so I will just close the so from here we can get the the prisma client so we need to create actually the prisma module so because we are accessing the so there should be a mechanism to access the prisma models and the same as the database module we have the prisma module so we can create a prisma folder and there we will create a prisma module and prisma service so prisma.service.ts and prisma.module.ts this is a service and then we have a prisma module from this prisma module we will access this prisma service inject this inside our uh, file DAO service and file DAO service will be able to access the data through it okay so this is the prisma service and we'll import this we will put the prisma module in the dependencies and this is where we will access the files dot you can see the file we actually change the name but that will take some time to reflect so we already have the files but uh, we need to close the vs code and open it again to see the changes and here we do the create inside that there is a data as an object you can pass the payload whatever you wanted to put so this payload is actually partial like whatever the file entity we have i think we need to remove this partial keyword because we are we need to pass the whole payload it's a create not an update so this is how you will access the prisma client so here it is a file data let's change it all together to the different name and then prisma generate okay uh, it should be here we need to change the types again and the payload okay so this is what we are doing we can just return the data so this is the prisma insert command which is creating the record in the database uh, it's not reflecting the changes we can just check the typings but obviously typings have changed for the prisma client but uh, this vs code is not refreshing it so here we are creating a prisma client and the prisma module and then we will import uh, both these into our application so i just restarted vs code though because sometimes what happens is vs code doesn't pick the typescript typings which you change uh, after opening the vs code so i will just install i just generated this uh, prisma client and now i think it should be able to get the file data you see now file data is uh, captured correctly and here this is a payload i think we need to remove the partial whatever the required data we need to pass to the prisma create and then it will return the data so whatever the file you are do processing we are also going to create the record it's i think sizes of type string so we'll just put some dummy content or number dot two string you can do file dot uh, size it's a number and you can just uh, if this is optional and it is created at so we are just passing created at and updated at so now we are actually storing this data in the prisma also right so this is uh, the the thing we are doing let's see what is missing i think size string is missing so we'll just put uh, some dummy content here the missing the following property file data id size and all so we also need to specify id which is a uuid v4 and we can import the uuid v4 and i think the other required property we have is the size size we can put something in string and state is active let's say this is also string 
so this is the benefit of using TypeScript and then we are putting the response this is fetching the signed URL so I talked about these two approaches right uh, when you are uploading a file if uh, your bucket is public you can just upload and use the URL forever or if your bucket is private then you need to generate a signed URL so that your front end can use it to show the images or render the PDF okay and here in this prisma client uh, module we also create a prisma.module.ts just a pretty much simple uh, module we can copy paste and this module we also need to add in the app module so that I can use a prisma client everywhere so here inside this I will import the other modules first of all I need to mod uh, import the files module and all I mean that depends if you have imported prisma mod module on the root you don't need to import it in the files module okay uh, then files controller so here let's say auth module auth module is like independent module and where are we importing auth module we are importing auth module in the app module so we just need to populate the env also because uh, we are using the same thing swagger jwt secret and all because we are using authentication we will we can also add a auth guard to the controller level so that only if you have a proper access token authorized access token then only you are allowed to access the apis okay <coughs> now we already got the prisma module we have added that in the the file module file module will be imported in the app module and all the global modules like the config module the logger module all these things we can just do so here we are doing upload files so this is upload file is actually another uh, api route that is taking files as a object in the form data and it is uploading the files to the service so what we are doing we are taking array as a files here so i will just put the api tags for the swagger http status code created upload file is actually a decorator that will uh, and this use interceptor is important because this use interceptor is actually file interceptor using file interceptor and file name using file name property you need to send all the files to the backend and uh, this upload file is a custom annotated decorator we have created so that we can show things on the swagger docs in swagger also we can accept the files with the file name so here i can create a file.decorator.ts and then i can define the the type this upload file is a custom decorator i have created so api body so inside api body this will accept the object with the file name as a property inside an array and this is a file created response we just need to populate uh, things inside our dto like what will happen once you create a file so this this will help your swagger to show the expected response okay once this uh once you hit the api this is a kind of response you will receive from the api back and this express multer we need to install this multer types so we can do pnpm add uh, types multer and we also need to have an express that should be already there this is a dev dependency so we can create this and we are then going to call this upload method in our service so this is the actual method which we are going to consume from our next JS admin dashboard i think express is already there but we can hit this so that express can also be added as a dependency so now if we see what the upload i just copied the get signed upload uh, and created a copy of it change the method to the upload here also we are doing the same thing we are getting the files uh, the whole file object which is an array okay array of uh, file array of uh, express.multer.file okay this is the, the exact type we are getting that contains the original name file name and all those properties file of files so we are just uh, running this in the loop because there may be multiple files we need to upload to s3 so we got the file name and then here we are uh, we can just call the upload method into the file DAO service so because we are doing upload we are not uh, creating any signed url and all so let's see what the upload contains inside we are just passing file.buffer file.file name which is a key and file.original name and this upload method we will define in the DAO service so upload method should be pretty much simple two liner uh, that is actually how we upload to s3 
so this upload is actually using s3 client dot upload file key and the original name file is the buffer key is the uh, file key a uh, unique uh, id and the original name and here we are doing upload so we can call this from s3 service this is what it takes url location e take bucket and key that is the params we are passing so this is the service this is the actual we are calling this method and it is taking params config service dot bucket key and the body and it is generating a pre-signed url but that we don't need so now the important part is playing this end to end so once we are able to see this we create a document so we upload now we don't need the creating a pre-signed url we just create a record in the database so what we need to do is url we will get some url from the response so file dot uh, file original name and we need to just tweak the some of the properties here document uh, dot url document dot key document dot uh, url and document dot original name or file dot original name okay so this is uh, pretty much simple and we are returning the response back based on the number of the files which you are trying so we are going to hit this from the swagger to see if this really works uh, end to end and before that uh, because i actually created a uh, aws s3 module then there is a config module config module i'm injecting in aws s3 module and then aws s3 module i'm using in the file service i know there is a dependency injection issue when i'm trying to console log the config service uh, inside aws s3 it was coming undefined and i was not able to access all these properties so we will try to refactor this my plan is to create a dynamic module for the aws s3 so that we can inject the configurations dynamically through the file service using for root and for root async methods